At the point where my own memories begin, I felt a hard knock to the jaw. My head flashed with a dull, steady throb, and I wobbled to regain my composure. I took my first tentative steps with my eyes closed, and my mother's eyes shone with tears. Perhaps she blamed herself. They had poured all their lingering hopes into my success. In return, I occupied the place where their dreams had been. That was all. I was different, after all, potentially suspect. A big yellow dog with a baleful howl, with the body of a man and well-defined thoughts. Tough, unpredictable, ugly. A radiation victim, maybe. Whatever the reason, I knew only that it was too late for explanations. I went into the bathroom and stood in front of the mirror, naked, and wondered if something was wrong with me. I wonder sometimes how long I might have stayed there in painful silence, trying to reconcile the world as I had found it with the terms of my birth. You have me to thank for your eyebrows, she said, but your brains, your character, I know neither their origins nor their consequences. If you want to grow into a human being, she said firmly, it was a matter of taking life on its own terms. My mother's chin began to tremble, and she pulled me into a long hug that made me feel very brave. She began to cry. I told her there would be other times for us to see each other. She shook her head quickly. No, it's a harder choice than that, she said, and she bit down on her lip. I still trusted my mother's love, but from that day forward, I understood. I realized that I was to live with strangers, and my true life lay elsewhere. I listened to crickets chirp under the moonlight until she disappeared from sight, walking down an empty road.